Hey there, just wanted to give you a really quick tip about water holes this morning. So today I'm out here on my hunting property and uh, this is actually the first official uh, man-made water hole per se that I'll be adding to this property. And I just wanted to share some of the benefits that these man-made water holes can have. Um, this property's actually got a few uh, decent ponds and water sources for the deer on it but they're not in the best strategic hunting location. So by, by adding these water holes, you can pretty much put them wherever you want, which is the beauty of them. And uh, this water hole just happens to be an old sandbox that my buddy was giving away and he had asked if anybody wanted it and I said, heck yeah, I do. Um, so I, I took it and it's actually perfect because it's, it's really low profile. It's actually brown, so it's the color of the dirt. I don't have to stare at this ugly blue plastic thing out of my tree stand every night. And it should help it blend into the surroundings for the deer to use. So with it being low profile, I don't think I have to dig it in. Um, I'll set a trail camera up and see, see if deer start using it. And if they don't, maybe I will have to, to sink it in about halfway so it's a little closer to, to what a deer is used to drinking out of but it should hold roughly 50 gallons. And I've seen people use anything from, from uh, old sandboxes, old kitty swimming pools, those little blue ones that you see, um, cattle tanks. And now, you know, water holes have been becoming such a big thing that there's even companies making them that kind of look like a natural, natural pond in your landscape. So um, this is cheap and it was uh, super difficult to install as you could see. Uh, pretty much walk over, find a level spot, and throw it down. Uh, one thing I'm going to do is actually got a stick here underneath my foot. Probably end up throwing this. These water holes, you want to throw some sticks in there just in case you get some small mammals um, that may fall in or whatnot. Even some rocks that they can kind of that they can crawl up the edge on. You don't want, sometimes what'll happen is you get a mouse or something like that that'll run in there and, and die. And you don't want that that uh, dead drowning mouse in there. So this stick pretty much just lets like any small rodents or, or frogs that may not be able to swim very well, it gives them a way out. Um, but other than that, they're pretty simple to use. And this one's gonna set up really nice. This is a brand new food plot that I, had established last year, if you remember, we cleared this all out. And so the deer are really starting to use it now. It's the second year, really looking forward to hunting over it again. Um, and I'll be planting this in August. Um, so we got a couple months till we get to our, our fall plantings. But the t the, how the deer typically use this is the bedding's off this way. They walk up this trail and then they usually start feeding right away in the beginning of the food plot there. Well, my tree stands right here, so it takes them about 20 yards before I can even start thinking about a shot. And hopefully with this water hole, it's gonna entice them to kind of creep up here, maybe a little quicker. I mean, they usually work along this food plot as a staging area on out to the bigger, bigger fields right behind it anyway, but having this water hole right here, my tree stand right there, it's gonna set the deer up for a nice little drink and uh, should set me up for a perfect shot. So that's basically it when it comes to these small little water holes. I'm pretty excited to use it this fall. This is the first time I've ever ever put one out, so I'm really curious to see how the deer use it. Um, trail cameras will, will tell throughout the summer, and hopefully they get used to it. And with this summer especially, they're calling for a La Nina, which is the, the El Nino is on its way out, the wet and warm summer. So this is going to be supposed to be a hot, dry summer, similar to 2012, which uh, hopefully it's not that bad. That was a really, really rough year. But um, if it is, these water sources are going to make all the difference. Uh, biggest thing is you got to keep them filled. And uh, main reason I put this out today is because we're calling for a bunch of rain this week. Um, same reason I planted all my food plots this past weekend. Um, hoping to capitalize on that so I don't have to haul a, a big jug of water out here to fill it up. But Throughout the summer, I imagine I'll have to do it a time or two, and I'll probably just use the, the little sprayer tank that sits on the back of the four-wheeler. Um, it's about 15 gallons, so probably have to make a couple trips with that and empty it into here, but keeping them full, that way the deer, deer will continue to use them. This one's easy enough. I can, I can tip and dump out if the water gets real, real nasty and scummy, 
and give them some fresh water. Um, so yeah, other than that, keep some sticks in there so the, the rodents and critters can get out if they accidentally fall in. Um, can be an excellent, excellent attraction. Uh, not only to a small food plot, but say you're you're stuck into a, a timber, you don't have the luxury of creating these small food plots, you can tuck one of these guys in pretty much anywhere with minimal work. And it might just create that little extra attraction that you need to, to have a killer deer season.